Hello Year 9, so we're going to have a go at doing a Nick Frank in styled, uh, style experiment. Um, have a look at this example here, you can see uh, that the composition of his work is really interesting. He tends to use the square format, he tends to have his um, buildings quite closely cropped so we can see negative shapes because the background is quite minimal. He tends to use quite vibrant flat colours in the background. As you can see this example here, we've got this beautiful orangey sort of sunsetty haze, but actually on this um, building we can also see a little bit of orange being picked up. Sometimes he does keep a little bit of the sky so you can see some clouds here so that might be something you might decide to include or not but again we can see the negative space in terms of the background being really um, really really prevalent and the way that he's composed he's he's cropped this in a really interesting way so that we've got a triangle shape really dynamic and obviously the colors are too so you've got a couple of um, choices that you can work from or you can use one of your own photographs that's absolutely fine so i've selected this one this is obviously the sea city museum in southampton i chose it because the building itself is really dynamic and you could crop this building in any way you want i'm just simply going to focus on the, um, the top of the building here and the clock tower. So I've gone for the crop tool so that I can sort of use my rule of thirds to help me with my composition. And remember, we want it quite square. So that's how I've selected it. And I can move that around. If I'm not too happy with the position, I quite like it there. OK, so I'm just going to go in a little bit so that we can see it a little bit larger. Okay, fab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer. So down in your layers palette over here, the um, icon next to the bin with uh, which looks like a piece of paper. That's our new layer. Change the order. I'm just going to close the eye so we don't see the image for the moment. Then I'm going to go to the color swatch. And remember, on the color swatch, you can choose any color you like. It's absolutely fine. Um, I think I quite like that colour that we used or Nick Frank used before, that sort of orangey colour, so I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket tool, remember it might be hidden underneath the gradient tool, and I'm going to fill that. So I know that's going to be the colour of my sky. I'm going to turn the eye back on and make sure I've selected my top layer, which is called here background layer, but you can change the name of that just by clicking and writing in it. So I will put top layer in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the selection tools. I'm going to select the quick selection tool here. Again, it might be hidden behind the magic wand. And at the top, I can see my menu and I'm going to click on select subject. So because we're in Photopea, it takes a little minute to load. And you can see that I've got the marching ant tool all around the subject. So the subject is the building, not the sky. You can see some marching ant tools around the rest of the photograph, even though I've cropped it. So at the moment, what I might like to do is I might like to go to my image tool and go to adjustments and play around with the saturation. So I might want to desaturate my um, my Sea City Museum so it's kind of black and white or a little bit paler. I might want to make it more saturated. That's way too much. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle. The hue will change the colour as well, but we don't want too much colour changed Um for our foreground detail and then we can change the intensity of light and dark. So hue saturation, if you remember, is one option in our image adjustments drop down menu. You could play around with brightness and contrast, you could play around with exposure, you could play around with photo filters, all of those options are there for you to play around with. And this great thing about photography is that you use your taste. I'm then going to go to select and I'm going to click on inverse and what's happened now, I don't know if you can see that the marching ants are around the background, so the sky. So we've just got the sky selected here now, so what we might do is we might again go to our image adjustment menu and we might play around with the sky. Remember sometimes um, Nick Frank has the sky, you can see it quite visibly, um, like one of the examples we looked at, so you might be happy with that, or you might um, select the back tool and get rid of backspace toolbar and get rid of the background completely and then we've got our finished Nick Frank with that background. 
What you're going to need to do is obviously save that image, make sure you download it into your downloads, make sure you give it a proper name, and then upload it onto your slides. Add a slide called Nick Frank Experiment and add your show process or the step-by-step -step guide. So remember to help you do that, you can click back in Photopea and find the particular steps that you did. Once you finish with your edit and you're happy with it, um, then obviously um, also a reflection as well in your slides. Good luck. Thank you for listening. Well done.